This thing is something really special. This is no ordinary air cooler. This is the PC Cooler RZ820 and it got it got something really cool and really new. You see, we now have arrived at the point where eight heat pipe air coolers are normal. But this is not normal. Instead of just gluing eight heat pipes to a nickel plated copper base, PC Cooler tried something different because of those eight pipes, the two in the center are six millimeter in diameter. The two next to each side are a bit bigger at 8 millimeters, which is also very very big for a heat pipe, but the last one on each side, which is simultaneously pushed towards the inner side instead of making the row longer, that one is 6 millimeters thick again. And because that still wasn't enough, we also got a miniature heat sink on top of the base, because at this point, why not, if it helps? This is a fascinating design and without testing, I'm not even sure if having a, a thinner heat pipe like immediately above a heat source and surrounded by, by thicker heat pipes might not end up with a much, much better result than just stacking thick ones one next to the other. I mean, who knows? And we will find out, but before that, let's just quickly go over the cooler. As you might have already seen in the previous B-rolls, this is a big ass black dual tower cooler. The top of it is closed off by a magnetically attached matte grayish almost black plate which also houses the very small amount of ARGB that comes with this cooler. Three pin controllable, of course. The right heatsink is covered by the 120 millimeter fan. This one is spinning at up to 2200 RPM and pushing up to 86.7 CFM at up to 3.2 millimeters of H2O. After removing the top plate, we can pull out the 140 millimeter fan. This one is spinning at up to 1500 RPM, pushing up to 71.9 CFM at up to 2.12 millimeters of H2O. But because every spec seemed a bit too relax for them, they made this a 30 millimeter thick fan. Both fans of course 4 pin PVM controllable, including a splitter to run everything on a single port. Standing on the table, this is a behemoth, it measures 165 millimeters in height and 150 millimeters in depth. So watch out for that. Also because I've got a few regular ATX motherboards that use that first PCIe slot or that first position. But uh, yeah. Being 161 millimeters wide, the right fan will inevitably span over the RAM slots. But in case you wanted to use RAM that are higher than roughly 40 millimeters, which are yeah, a lot of them, you can simply lift the right fan because it's mounted on sort of a rail system. So no worries, the RZ820 is a 100% RAM compatible cooler. But keep in mind that everything that you add in RAM height basically just adds to the total one, 165 millimeter of the cooler. Cool. If you get this bad boy, it will come in a somewhat high quality packaging, not quite Noctua, but definitely upper shelf. Inside you will find a pre-assembled cooler and the mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, as well as the splitter that I mentioned before. To get the cooler going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate and shove it behind the motherboard. On the other side, take the Intel double-sided screws and screw them in. From there, take the Intel retention brackets, install them top and bottom from the socket with the arrow pointing towards the CPU and screw everything down using the thumb screws. Over on AMD, we need to remove the original retention brackets and replace them with the exact same double-sided screws, how, how thoughtful, and then AMD retention brackets, again arrow pointing towards the CPU and screw that one down. From there, on both both sockets, you don't need any thermal paste as there is already some pre-applied on the base. Or in case of re-application, you can also use the access one provided by PC Cooler. How thoughtful. Take off the top cap, remove the central fan and slap that thing on there. And after screwing everything down, put everything back together again. So cooler overall covered. Let's finally take a look if that 4 6mm and 4 8mm heat pipe design outperforms the competition. Starting off with Intel at 120 watts, aka gaming, barely doing something on the chip allows the RZ820 to cool down the 3900K to 31.3 degrees C above ambient, which, um, which is, uh, yeah, I, I had to double check that. Whilst doing very little, this somewhat unknown cooler actually made it to the peak of air coolers on Intel, outperforming everything else. The Icedeed X7, Phantom Spirit, Corsair A115, Noctia NHD 15 G2, everything lost. Mind you, from the group of very best coolers, the difference between the first and last is like barely one degree. But still, seems like the thin heat pipes do a great job here. Raw performance out of the way, what about noise? For that we make the fan spin slower and slower whilst noting down the performance and the noise and 
Unfortunately, as low as this thing can go in terms of temperatures, it can also push the noise just as high. To be very clear, this is not a bad result. This is a not so perfect result. But compared to the best of the best, which this thing compares to, it is simply not quite there if you noise or performance normalize the group of very best coolers. The only one that will lose against the RZ A20 will be the Thermal Take Tough Air 710, which, yeah, if you remember that review, it, it didn't go too well. Over to 250 watts, where the RZ A20 managed to keep the chip at 61.7 degrees C above ambient. Still a very, very good result, if not excellent, just not at the top anymore. At this point, the Dark Rogue Elite took over and the other coolers started to catch up. The noise to performance graph for 250 watts, however, is still the same thing, maybe even slightly worse and slightly s more severe this time around. Now the gap started to get bigger, but the upper punch that the RZ820 had before started to fade. And at 320 watts going through the socket, we have to allow the chips to go to 110 degrees C before we stop the test, because otherwise there will be like <laughs> two coolers left. And at that load, the RZ820 took again the second spot. This time it just lost against the Corsair instead of the Be Quiet one. And the noise to performance graph doesn't really make sense here, to be honest. Everything is just a smudge. And we are at 320 watts, we are basically just benchmarking uh, bases. <laughs> it's, yeah, which one survives? And then this one does. And what about AMD CPUs? For that, we benchmark coolers on top of a 7950X3D and we measure the achieved average clock speed across all cores at every fan setting and 10% steps and we map out the noise to performance curve. And for AMD, this is going to be a really interesting one because AMD CPUs do not look like Intel ones underneath the IHS. You see, where Intel has a long centered chip, aka the main heat comes out somewhat in the center, where the two thin heat pipes are, AMD has everything moved towards the bottom. And without an offset mounting in the box, uh, yeah, that heat is not going to come out where the cooler thinks it's going to. Anyway, I have to apologize here for the lack of like enormous data set, but we had to redo the benchmarks recently because I decided to change the settings. But the result is exactly where I feared it is going to be. Not only is the Nokia NHD 15 G2 quieter at a normalized performance level, or in other words, no matter how loud I want the cooler to be, the clock speed will always be higher on the D15 G2, but for some reason the PC cooler or the A20 gets louder and louder and louder, whilst the average clock speed just doesn't really go up. Like from 30 to 40% fan speed, you see a shift going up, and so does 50, but from there on, it's kind of just flat, and the D15 G2 is way above that at this point. And that leaves me with a sweet sour conclusion. Concept-wise, the RZ A20 is really freaking cool. I haven't seen mixed matched heat pipes before. Really cool idea. PC Cooler, please continue to throw out really cool ideas onto the market. But the cooler still has two problems. First off, this design doesn't work on AMD. I mean, it doesn't work. It does work on AMD. I mean, you, you saw the graph, it does fine. It's just not as well performing on AMD. It may work better if you combine it with an offset mounting. Who knows? Maybe pushing the cooler down by six, seven, eight millimeters might fix the problem. Again, it is not a bad cooler on AMD. If I throw in Probably like the, the Tough Air, the RZ820 will still do a fantastic job. But this is a 8 heat pipe monster, so let's compare it to similar monsters against, for example, the D15G2. And on AMD, there is just no chance. The second issue, or the main issue that this cooler has, in my opinion, is, is noise. It's, it's the fans. Don't get me wrong, it's not unbearably loud, absolutely not. We had way louder coolers on the market. But compared to all the other, like, top liners, it's it's lacking behind a bit. Not by a lot, there, there are worse cases out there, but it's lacking. And the sad thing here is, raw performance-wise, this concept works magically on Intel, on, a, on or, for example, 3900K on 120, 250 or 320 watts. It works, or it worked, amazingly. And generally speaking, as far as Intel goes, the RZ A20 is one of the best coolers we have had so far. Like, that thing is partially at the top or take second spot, it is a very, very good cooler. 
But if the noise would have been slightly tuned down, just by a bit, a dB or two, it would have mixed with the other ones, possibly even taking a top 3 ranking spot in a noise normalized testing. Other than that, we have two very small things that annoy me with the cooler. First up is the cable of the 140mm fan in the center. It likes to get caught in the fins. Incredibly annoying if uh, you're trying to get it out or in. Making it longer, even if that makes the cable management after the fact a tiny bit harder, that could have solved the issues. We, ha we had multiple coolers that had a, a fan in the middle and the longer the central cable is, the easier it is to somehow fill it in. And nothing about this is really upgradable or repairable. I haven't figured out until now how to take off the 120mm fan and I still don't. I mean, I could rip it off, but I... I just don't want to do that, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, if it seems for now, if that thing breaks, then, then it breaks. Well, what about the price? Here in Europe? No idea, I can find it. But over on the US, it's going for 137 USD on Amazon. And on Newsag, it's going for 87.99 right now, or 110 after the supposedly limited time offer. To be clear, as long as you are running Intel, this thing is basically a slightly louder version of the NHD 15 G2. And if you then compare the price, I mean, that that's a uh, given. So as for me, if you are running Intel, absolute recommendation, you might want to limit the PVM curve a bit to not make this thing ramp up unnecessarily. But other than that, if you're looking for a great Intel cooler, I mean, the concept really works. But okay, this should be everything on the PC cooler or CPS, I'm not even sure at this point, but the RZ820. And at this point, a huge thank you to PC cooler for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to fund a research into how they came up with that A20. Eight heat pipes? Sure. But what does that two stand for? Eight pipes, two types, zero thermal throttle? We need to find out. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Noxia NHD 15G2. If noise is your main priority, maybe that one is for you. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.